Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, last time on I watched it but didn't like it, we talked about what to expect from the likes of the cheaper point and shoots like the Olympus OZ-1. But today I want to talk a little bit more about what to expect from the more expensive point and shoots. That's right, it's a double feature, emphasis on the feet. There are quite a few premium point and shoots left over on the used market and they go for a pretty substantial price. But why? Because they're titanium? Is that it? Not really. It seems like the difference is really about adding more functionality, but let's not jump ahead. So picture this. There I was watching the Emma Chamberlain video where she buys a Contax T2 and it triggered my gas so goddamn hard I nearly blew a hole in my chair. Gear acquisition syndrome is a real thing and well, yeah, I bought one. Luckily for me, I had just recently come into a large sum of money betting against the St. Louis Cardinals this season. So I figured why not treat myself for my, you know, 60th birthday, you only get one of them and get the blingiest of them all, the gold one. The Contax T2 is a premium camera, there's no doubt about that, but it's sort of become a bit of a, the butthole of the joke of the film community, probably because it's one of the original hype cameras. Seems like ancient lore nowadays when Kendall or Kylie or Kyle or whatever their name is flashed it on one of the uh, Jimmy Late Shows. I don't know. Ever since then, that camera has become pretty blingy. Like if you buy one, you gotta do the mirror selfie thing and post it so that everybody knows you're shooting the same camera as insert celebrity here. But at the heart of the T2 is actually a really solid camera. But how and why? Let's find out. <laughs> Placing no value on our own lives, Monica and I hopped on the flying equivalent of Waffle House and headed east to Vegas for a midweek getaway. After all, when you're testing a blinged out camera, what's better than the city of, you know, heat waves, debt, liver failure, and STDs? Anyway, after crashing into the side of a mountain twice, eventually Spirit Airlines got us there and we were off to the races, as per usual, with zero notifications when I finally turned off airplane mode. With no time to waste and shaking from excitement or uncontrollable gambling addiction, I loaded up the Contax T2 with some Cinestill 800T. I decided on 800T for a myriad of reasons. At night, Fremont Street has just a ton of neon out the ass and back around. And while 800T just sort of outperforms in those kind of situations, but I was also sort of in the market for a low light film stock that would act as a complement to my work with Ektachrome quite well. Something I could, you know, pop into the camera and not really have to worry about bringing a tripod. Plus, if you shoot 800T in daylight at 400 ISO, I think it looks quite nice. All right, off to a good start with this photo taken through a window. As I mentioned in the last video, shooting through glass is a very hit or miss thing, and luckily this time it worked. I will say the Contax T2 does tend to trip up on glass and produce an out of focus image oftentimes. However, this camera does have a function on it that allows you to bypass this problem, and perhaps that's what kind of makes this camera a little bit more premium somehow manual control. The T2 has a uh, settings wheel up top here that you use to turn the camera on but just past all the preset options is the option to manual focus, more or less. Basically, you can force this camera to shoot at infinity if you're worried about it getting you know, locked up or missing focus on glass or something. Does that make it worth the uh, cashola? Not really, but it's a handy feature. After eating White Castle and falling seriously ill in a probably unrelated thing, night crashed down upon us and it was time to seriously punish that 800T. I don't know if you remember, much less care, but exposure lock was Sort of a big issue in my last go around into the world of ass plastic point and shoots for this photo of Vegas Vicky. I did the thing where, you know, I pointed the camera at the shadows. The viewfinder of the Contax T2 told me what shutter speed it was planning on using. I was able to hold the shutter button down and then reframe so that I wouldn't get an image that was sort of backlit, you know, exposed for the neon lights and lose all that shadow detail. 
this whole exposure lock thing is kind of a mixed bag though. When I was first starting out in photography, I would never know that this is kind of a common problem and it's only with experience that you kind of learn and adjust but that's only really possible with cameras that have you know the right functionality on board so maybe that's what makes a camera like the contacts t2 worth like a thousand dollars these days After drinking some sort of baby Yoda fluid that made me black out and get the all-time skee-ball high score, though I wish I could remember it, we did some bowling and Monica was a natural. So let's talk lenses, starting with this shot. As I mentioned before, a lot of people just aren't really gonna see a significant drop off in terms of quality of lenses. But in all fairness, the lens is a significant reason why a lot of people decide to plunge their precious gold doubloons into a system like this. The Fuji Natura S has a lens that can stop down to f1.9. For a point shoot, that's pretty damn fast. Though it was meant to be used with Fuji Natura 1600 film, but we don't need to get into that dark tail right now. The Contax T2 features a Zeiss 38mm 2.8 that is overall quite good. Sharp, you know, but not wide open. Which brings us back to this image. Shot wide open, it's a little dreamlike, but luckily for you, Contax knew that it would be kinda assy at f2.8. So they programmed the camera to only go wide open to 2.8 in emergency situations, like this one where there was almost no light. Anyway, after bowling over 250 consistently, like four times, I just didn't film it, but believe me, I did. We headed back out on the streets. To take this whole ultimate control manual power thing uh, even a step further, the lens on the Contax T2 has aperture selection marks. If you leave it at uh, f2.8 like I usually do, it will auto select your aperture for you, which includes the use of f2.8 in low light. So I guess technically the lowest aperture that you can force this camera to use manually is f4. It's also got flash settings if you'd like to use them. I typically don't and I cherish the fact that the default setting for this camera is not some auto flash setting because I try to be pretty inconspicuous when I'm out on the street shooting. I mean, how would you feel getting flashed by a total stranger? Uh, camera flashed, not the other thing. Uh, where are we going? We're going to two, actually. Yeah. That angle. Oh my god. So, maybe now would be a good time to talk about another feature on the Contax T2 that is you know, hotly lusted after. Believe it or not, the Contax T2 features yet another dial to underexpose or overexpose your film at will, whoever will is. Basically, it allows you on a per shot basis to compensate for backlighting, intentionally shoot your film at a different speed, or even push or pull your film. It's insane. I've shot Camp Mirror at 1600 in this thing before, with no issues. For daylight and Cinestill 800T, I like to shoot at one stop over to give the stock more light and just overall warm it up a bit. The thing is, not many point shoot cameras feature this kind of functionality. It's weirdly manual for something that's a point and shoot. Does that make this camera worth the high price tag of not buying groceries for six months? I still don't think so, but it's possible that the culmination of all these features that I've just mentioned make this camera what it is and what it's worth. Though the point is not again lost on me for beginners who are just starting out, this is probably not the camera for you because you don't know potentially yet what you like. If you handed me this camera in week one of my photography, I wouldn't know what any of this dial means. It would look like hieroglyphics to me. Anyway, it was nighttime once again, as that tends to happen every day. And we went to grab some dinner and round out this roll of 800T, and the T2 was once again exposing it back at 800 ISO, and you know what? It was slaying it.
But speaking of slaying it, how about we talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace, and how they're absolutely slaying the website building game. It's the modern era. Just about everyone is online. And if you aren't yet, you're missing out on a great opportunity to have your work and services available to the masses at a heartbeat's notice. Get started building your very own corner of the internet with hundreds of professionally designed templates and begin sprinkling in your work to make it your own. If you can't make a choice, worry not. Squarespace houses brand new tools like design intelligence, which utilize groundbreaking artificial intelligence to not only perfect, but personalize your new website down to every last detail. I've personally been using Squarespace to host my own photography portfolio, but recently began playing with the idea of renovating it to include a web shop so that I can sell prints of my photographic work. And Squarespace makes it easy with payment methods such as Klarna, Direct Debit, Apple Pay, Afterpay, and even ClearPay. You can even now use AI to power things like product and video descriptions as well as email campaigns. It's designed to take some of the load off when crafting your new website workspace to allocate other resources like time and critical thinking to other more important components of your online presence. So what do you waiting for. If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. If you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So to conclude this problematic video and ultimately this double feature between two point shoots of entirely different calibers, I'd have to say functionality is at the true heart of it all. Sure. The Contax T2 has, you know, camera drip or is dripping something. I don't know. The battery might have melted, whatever. At the end of the day, this tiny little camera just has so many more features and functionalities built in that allow you to do whatever you want with your photos. If you're just starting out and you don't know what like stops are or what any of these numbers on the lens mean, then maybe it's not the camera for you and you don't need to shell out like a thousand dollars for this thing. Lucky you, because all these point shoot cameras are all computers of some variety and what invariably happens to every computer on the planet. No, they don't become sentient and evil. They just wear out and then die like all of us in 50 years. 25 if we're lucky. There's no such thing as like a automatic mechanical point shoot as far as I'm aware. So unless you have a very good reason to, it just makes more sense for like 90% of people to stick with the, you know, cheaper, more budget friendly uh, point shoots that are out there. This camera will sh the bed on me eventually. And I know that I'm just hoping that I can get some good work out of it before, you know, that day comes. I will say for this, that I got more hits on the Contax T2 than I did on the cheaper alternatives like the Olympus OZ1 or the Minolta Freedom Zoom. And you may hate me for saying that, I get it. I hate myself too, for that reason and a lot of other reasons. But I gotta say, there is just something going on with this thing other than titanium bouginess. Having a ton of manual control on something that can fit into your pocket is the dream, right? And it's ultimately why this thing probably costs a fortune and ultimately why contacts probably went out of business. I mean, who the hell was this thing made for? Sexy people on vacation that wanna capture it luxuriously and are fluent in photography? I'm not even sure that super niche category even existed until maybe recently, but what do I know? F nothing, that's for sure. Anyway, I look forward to the barrage of uh, dislikes on this video. See you next time.